Like with the prose passage, in order to clarify the process of how you answer certain questions, we're not going to go over the questions in order. Instead, we are again going to go over them in groups by how you approach answering the question. Okay, next we're going to look at questions 6 and 7 together because question 7 is asking you to select the best support for your answer to question 6. When you have these paired questions, you want to read the initial question and see if you know the answer. If you do, then select the answer and go to the next question to find which excerpt from the passage best supports your answer. So basically, you're answering these questions in order, number six, then number seven. But if you are not certain what the answer is to the initial question, then you want to go to the places in the passage indicated in the evidence question and see which of these places helps you find the answer to the initial question. So basically, you would be answering question number seven before question number six. Let's start by reading number six. According to the passage, drift occurs more often at night because... Hmm. Well, is your first instinct to just return to the passage? To look to see why drift occurs more often at night? If so, then we really want to look at number seven first. Let's look at the answer choices for the evidence support question, but... Instead of just reading that excerpt that's given, we're going to look at its placement in the passage as a whole. Okay, let's start with choice A. It comes from the very short paragraph 2, which describes how aquatic insects move, and it ends with, The prevalence of each mode of locomotion changes with different stages of the aquatic insect's life cycles. Okay, well, this is far too general and does not answer the question as to why insects drift more at night. So, choice A is wrong. Now, looking at just the placement of choice B, it's in paragraph 3. And we see that this is wrong because this whole paragraph is about crawling, not drifting. So, choice B is out. Now, choice C is in paragraph 4, which is about drifting, but... This excerpt is just stating that drifting is the second locomotory behavior of aquatic insects that allows for longer distance movement. And then what follows is more of a description of how insects drift on water and the benthic substrate. So nothing about why drift occurs more at night. So choice C is out. Lastly, we have choice D, which is from paragraph 5, which is primarily about drifting and fly fishing. And the excerpt is, Predation pressure from drift-feeding fishes has also produced an interesting evolutionary consequence. Okay, but what if we keep reading? In drifting insects, the number of drifting insects increases dramatically at night, sometimes by as much as an order of magnitude. Hmm, and let's keep reading some more. This disparity between daytime and nighttime drift occurs because drift-feeding fish are visual feeders, and therefore the risk for drifting insects decreases dramatically at night when fish vision is limited by low light levels. Okay, so clearly we know that the answer to number 7 is choice D. So in order to answer number 6, try saying in your own words, why does drift occur more often at night? So... Maybe you would say, because at night it's hard for the fish to eat the insects when it's dark or when the fish can't see. Now all we have to do is select the answer that matches this idea. Well, clearly it's choice A. It is dark. So in this case, this pair of questions was easier to answer by looking at the evidence first or by answering number seven first then using the place in the passage to find the answer to question six. Remember, if you have to look back at the passage to answer one of these paired questions, then you should look at the evidence or support answers in the passage, not just the little excerpt that they give you, but where it is in the context of the whole passage. Then, once you find the place where the answer is, you have also found the answer. So, sure, you may be answering them out of order, but another way to put it is you're answering them simultaneously. 
All right, great job. So again, what are you going to take with you as you move forward to the next passage in reading comprehension? Well, you want to remember the best practice makes plain or clear the process that you will follow. So let's think about it. What are you already doing that is effective and efficient? What changes do you need to make? Do you need to change how you approach reading the passage? Or how you approach answering the questions? Remember, with each passage and questions that you complete, you are becoming more effective and more efficient. So let's keep paying attention to the methods and keep practicing.